Hello again. Now, you see before your eyes a very, very early computer. In fact, this is a Sinclair ZX81, built around 1981. A friend of mine has given this to me and asked me if I can do some upgrades and some repairs on it. Uh, so I thought it'd be a good opportunity to do a couple of videos um, showing you what I've got to do. First things first, um, the obvious damage to this is the keyboard we've got damage here we've got damage up there and we've got damage down there as well so uh, what we need to do with this is to replace it so i have here a new keyboard uh, this was manufactured 2014 uh, this will go inside and then stick over on the top i'll show you how to remove this we've got to do a couple of other things as well um, the output on these, where it's gone, just there, is for the old TV set. So this is one that used to tune in and is not really compatible with modern monitors or anything. So I have a kit here um, that replaces it. So we'll be building up this kit um, in one of the vi videos um, and then we're going to replace that within the Sinclair ZX81. And finally, after all that is done, we're going to insert this chip and put this chip in. Now, the memory on this is 1K, but on the boards, it does allow you to uh, have space to upgrade it to 16K, which is what this chip will do as well. So again, we'll we'll go through and look at, look at how that is done as well. So if you like your vintage machines, uh, um, like I said on previous vi videos, I'm not one of these channels that you know, dives into uh, repairing um, vintage machines as a regular thing. This is just a, a one-off, but I hope you enjoy it. What we'll do now, though, is let's have a quick look inside. Uh, we shall remove the feet. Like so. And then underneath the feet, we have some screws. All right, those screws are all loose, so let us remove them. There we go. Is that all the screws out? No, there's one more down there. Right, let's put that to one side. Uh, so this is the reverse side of the board. So let's have a quick look at the other side. So as you can see down here, this is where the ribbon cable from the keyboard comes through. And we can immediately see here, look, that the keyboard is damaged. Uh, this is quite normal for computers of this, this age. Uh, so let us tear that over. So, okay, so looking in there, actually we've got some of the keyboard is actually left, the ribbon's left inside that socket there. So we'll have to take that out later on. So this is the basic circuit board. Um, I'm not going to go into great detail of how it works, but um, just uh, so you know, we've got uh, what's called the ULA down here. This is looks after uh, all the um, uh, instructions that the computer has to do. It uh, acts between the input of the um, tape deck, which is here, and the output, the video, which is here. We've got the main chip, which is here. Uh, this is a, a, Z a Z80 chip. 
We've got the ROM, which is there. We've got Sinclair re Research on it, and the date code is 1981. And this is the memory. This is the 1K of memory here. Um, now, you can either have uh, two chips, which goes in here, or you can have the one chip. And this is the chip that we're going to be replacing later on. Um, and that's basically it. This is the output for the telly. Uh, oh, this, by the way, is a heatsink for the 5 volt regulator, which goes at the top here. There's the heatsink. Um, and if I can pop this off. Oh, that's a bit stiff. There we go, that's got that off. So this is the circuit board in here that we'll be replacing. Uh, oh, yeah, it is, it is actually replacing it, isn't it? Uh, but we'll need to keep this output here for the cable to go on, which we shall be looking at next. So there you go, that is a the insides of a ZX81. Right, so this is the modular kit that we're going to replace on the Z ZX81. Uh, it goes between the signal output of the ULA and the socket on the back. It just gives a clearer, brighter signal and it will also connect to a, a modern type of monitor instead of a TV set. As you can see, the circuit diagram is blown up here. It's got a list of all the components there and the circuit board and components are here. So let's open up the bags. Right. So first of all, we've got the chip, which is uh, a just a timer, a five 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 timer. So there it is on there, and in this one, Right, so we've got some couple of resistors there, capacitor, another resistor, another capacitor, a couple of those, we've got some diodes there, transistor and another resistor, so we'll have to check the resistor value, so make sure we get them right. And there's a circuit board, a bit small, but uh, as, as you can see, but uh, Sorry about the strobing, let's see if I can get rid of that. No, it's playing up to date. Okay, so there it is. Right, okay, so uh, this is gonna be really small to solder, but I think I'll, uh, I won't use my vise because it might be a bit too small for that. Anyway, let's let's see how it goes. Right, let's have a quick look at the tester. Sixty seven kilo ohms. Oh, that would be that one there, sixty eight. So that one there is our three. So let's pop that in first. So R3 is over there, so that's that one there. Bit tight on the circuit board, but that's okay. So the other should be fairly easy because there's only one of these. Uh, so this must be R4. And R4 goes near R3. Uh, yep, just there. 
Right, that's got that on. A bit fiddly, but never mind. And then the two small resistors are R1 and R2. So they go to the other side of the board. That's better, that fits on nicely. Right, let's get the solder iron up out and we can solder those up. Right, the next couple of components we'll put on are the diodes. Now with the diodes they have a black band on them and the black band matches up to the band that's marked up on the circuit board just there, the little line. So let's get them on next. Just bend the legs as normal. Slide them on. Like so. And the other one. Again making sure that you've got the, the band on the right side. Like that, and then we can solder them to in place. Right, okay, so that's got that one done. Right, I think the next thing we'll put on are the two transistors. Now, they're both the same. And on the transistors, uh, they've got a flat side and a round side, and that matches up to the flat side and the round side on the circuit board. So pop that in. Like that. Just going to bend out the outer two legs just to hold it in place. The transistor. Same again, making sure that the flat is matching on the circuit board. And we can get them two soldered in place as well. Just be careful of these because these are quite close together. So a bit of fine soldering going on here. Yeah, and immediately I've got a solder bridge. Right, let's have a closer look at that. So the second one I did looks okay, but the first one, as you can see just there, I've got a bit of a solder bridge, so we need to clean that out. So let's see if we can do it the easy way first off. Yep, that looks okay. I'm just going to try that a little, just again. Just going to let the solder line just go between them. There we go. Okay, and once that's done, I'm sorry about the strobing. Sort that out. Right, that's got them two on. Next thing we'll do is the capacitor, the, the larger one. Now, as you can see, it's got a band on the side here, and that leg is shorter, so that's the ground or the negative and the longer leg is a positive. So that coloured band goes to the colour band on the screen here with the long leg being the positive, so that's got a plus on the circuit board. So let's pop that in there. Again, I'm just going to bend the legs over. Right, 
Right, that's got that in. And then we've got three more capacitors, but these are not uh, defined as to which is left and which is right. But let's just check the values because that's that one there is bigger. So we've got uh, one at 10, one at 820 PF and one at 82. OK. Right, what's this one then? <coughs> This is 103. Right. Okay. Let's try these two. What are these two? 821 and 82. Right. So the 821 is for C3. <coughs> it says 821 on it. And on the listings, it's 820. That's okay. And that goes into C3 which is at the top there. Um, this one is 82, which is C4. And that goes just there. So this one must be 80, which is um, C2, uh, which is the 10, 10 and F. So that goes into C2. There we go. Yeah, 103, 10, I suppose that's about right. OK, let's get them soldered up. Right, so the last component to put on is the integrated circuit. We've got a socket here. Uh, we've got a little cutout, a little dimple just there on the left-hand side. And that matches up with a little cutout on the um, display on the board. So let's pop that in. See if it'll go in. Legs are bent, so we just have to straighten those legs out a bit. OK, let's give that a try, see what that looks like. Yep, that's OK. Let's get a bit of blue tack just to hold it on the board. Then just done this before, all I'm going to do is just put a, a dab of solder on this leg here, a dab of solder on that leg there. Take our blue tack off, right, as you can see, so it has actually moved away from the board. So I'm just going to hold it in my hand, put a bit of pressure on it. And then push it against the board. Sorry, you can't see. Still not quite there. Right, that's now gone into place. So let's put the IC on. Right, so there we have it. The little circuit board is built up, ready to go in the metal case. So what we have to do now, <coughs> this is the case that it's replacing. Uh, we've got to take the circuit board out of here. So the best thing to do is take this off the board and by doing that, we've got to desolder these points here. And then there's a couple of wires here. So let's get that done now then. Right, the best thing to do, and it sounds odd, but the best thing to do is actually is to flow a bit of fresh solder onto these. 
I need quite a bit of heat so just throw a fresh bit of solder and that will just help we try and um, desolder them next thing we need is a desoldering gun <coughs> okay. Now we need to uh, take the wires off, these two wires off, but I'm going to try and scroll in and show you that on the circuit board they are actually marked UK, so there's UK there and UK at the back there, and the other two points, that one and that one, are marked at USA, so we're okay if we take these out, we know where they're going to go. This one here, this right hand side one, is a plus 5 volt, and this one here is a signal cable. Right, that's got those two cables out. And the board looks still okay, both sides, yep. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to just pause because this, this will take a bit while to fiddly, but I've just got to try and desolder these points a bit more and pull this case off eventually, this case here. Right, back in a minute. Right, as you can see, I've now got it off. What I did in the end, uh, when it was underneath, I put the screwdriver in and just gently, very gently, just pushed it in as I put the soldering iron on the pin that side, which pulled it off a little bit. And I did the same for this side, heated the pin up and pulled it off a board a little bit, go back to that side. did that about four or five times, and eventually the uh, box popped off. So what we need to do now is take this circuit board out. Um, now I believe there is, yeah, there's a resistor which is soldered onto that socket just there. So let's just see if we can get rid of that link out of the way, like so. Okay, and is it connected anywhere else? Not that I can see. Right, okay. See if we can push this out. No, it's not pushing out easily. Oh, I see why. Right, so that's that wire solder through there, look. So we're going to have to cut that on the inside. Right, that's that one cut. That one's not soldered in, so. No, still refusing to budge. Right, back in a moment. Right, I think I've worked it out. Let's try this. Okay, so that's the problem there, look. We've got solder. I knew, I thought it was soldered somewhere, soldered all the way around. So we need to get rid of that solder. Ouch, that is, box is so hot. <laughs> Let's give it a minute. Well, it's a couple of days later, and I hope you have a better success than I do. I did with getting the circuit board out. This is the new one. Let's just put that to one side for a moment. The old one, as you can see, is now in several pieces. Um, 
It took me ages to unsolder them from the side, the, the circuit board from the side. And it wasn't until I was hacking away at it that I realised that the centre divider also has a pin in the middle which was attached to, yep, the circuit board. And that's why it wouldn't come out in one piece. But I didn't realise that until later. So I really hope that I don't have to go back to this circuit board because, as you can see, it's now in kit form. <clears throat> um, after I got the circuit board out, I then removed this um, divider that was in there that was just simply soldered in the side. And we are finished with the casing like that. So that's okay. So our new one, which is here, um, can go in. Um, now, it will go in. I'm going to do this upside down. Um, it will go in. Uh, and oh, before I forget, uh, but, 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 right, you can see just here, look, let's point it out with the screwdriver. There's some little nodules there and there, and then the side there and there. And the circuit board will actually sit on those when you can get it in straight. Like that. There we go. Um, and where the diodes are, so the diodes are underneath the connector just there um, and the capacitor will sit just there on this side. If you try and get it any, any other way, the, where the transistor is in this corner will be there and it won't fit. Uh, we do have the connections down the left hand side there. So what we need to do is we need to put our wires on here first. Now they connect so we'll bring in a piece of paper, scroll out a little bit. So we've got three connections down here. We've got video out. We've got VLA pin 16 by the looks of things and five volt input. So we need to have cables that go, in, go from the circuit board to those points. Now, if you remember on the main board, We've got a connection down here, which, uh, if I remember rightly, is the 5 volt. And then the ULA is just here that we need to solder the other wire onto. Um, and the video out, obviously, will go to the centre pin, which is this one just here. So let's, let's get some wires. OK, so we have some wires. We have blue, black and white here. So we'll use the uh, blue for the signal. And I will use the black and white for the uh, plus five and the video in. Um, so this one doesn't need to be too long because it's just going to go from the circuit board to the pin. So we'll chop that down quite short. But we won't do it too short at the moment because we can uh, cut it down later on once it's in the box. Um, So I'll just strip a little bit of plastic off it and then hopefully that will be able to go in. Uh, so video out, so that will go in just there like that. That's okay and uh, we'll just get the solder iron on and we'll get that soldered in place. Right, let's get this wire soldered up, so a little dab of flux on it. Just a little snitch of solder, just to tin it. And then we'll put it in the circuit board. That's that one done. I'll just snip that off. Okay, so that's the video out. So the next one to it goes to the ULA. So we'll use the, the black cable for that. Okay, that moved around a bit, but that's okay. It's uh, 
soldered in place. Get the move out slightly, but it's okay. So there we go, that's got the cables in. So what we need to do now is to put this in the box. Now on the flip side of it, you'll see that there's some silver pads just here. And that allows us to do what happened before, which is to solder it in in place in, in the actual box itself. So push the wire through. Oops. Uh, right, yes, of course, we need to push the wire through. Will they go through that hole? No, they won't. Right, let's go. That thing. Right, that's ready to solder in place now. So this blue cable we've got to connect to the centre pin there later on. Um, we just I'm just double checking to make sure there's nothing touching the outer edges apart from the bit that's supposed to, which is them bits there. So let's. Uh, Let's get a bit of flux on this and let's get some soldering done. Right, I shall leave that for a second or two before I touch it. Right, I've managed to solder a bit on. I uh, didn't realise at first, but these pads here hadn't connected. So I've managed to get a bit of solder across there to the bit of old solder and down in this corner as well here. Just making sure that you don't touch that pad in the corner, but that's that seems to connect it okay. So let's press on. <clears throat> we need to get this wire in here. And that goes on to the signal side, just there. Okay, that's that done. So, uh, just a reminder, we've got the white is the voltage and the black is the signal that comes from the ULA. Right, so we're ready to mount this now onto the circuit board. What I did is the holes here um, that the pins of the case has got to go through. I've got a very fine drill and I just, with my fingers, just slowly worked it through the holes just to clean them out, just to get rid of any bits of solder that's there. Um, just to make sure that it's all nice and clean. And then what we're going to do is we're going to mount this box back onto the board. Like so. And then we can solder the pins back into place. Uh, just before we do that, let's just check to make sure. I'll just do a quick continuity test. So... I'm just going to make sure that it is still grounded. Yes, it is. That's okay. Right, so we'll solder that up. We'll solder these up. Um, and then we can connect the, the wires here. Right. Make sure our solder is nice and clean. We'll put a dab of, sol of uh, flux on the pins there we go now I needed quite a bit of heat on that because obviously it's going to be dispersed by the metal box but uh, there we go that's got those on now if we take a close look I don't know if you can see this or not Let's see if we can zoom in a bit So um, if we look at this pin here, it's got UK on it just there. A bit of light, I might be able to see it. Apologies for the strobing. 
Uh, so we've got a UK just there, and if you follow the trace on the circuit board, it goes to pin 19 on the ULA. So we need to put our signal into that hole, and this UK here, we need to put our power into that hole there. Right, so white is our 5 volt, so let's do that one first, we can chop that one back. I think I'll just put a dab of solder on the end of that because the wires keep fraying as I push it through the hole. Right, that should hold the wires together. Let's try that again. There we go. So that's come through just here. Solve that one up. And we can do the same with the signal, which is on uh, the black cable, which is J2. So again, we'll just chop the cable. And it needs to go into the other UK hole in the board. Right, that's got that done. Okay, we should be in a position now, I think, to connect the TV up to it and see if it works. What I'm going to do now, though, before I go any further, we're just going to clear some of this rubbish off the board. Make sure that there's no bits of solder or anything or any rubbish on the bottom of the board uh, to make sure it's nice and clean. So let's, let's do that first. Let's just clean the desk off so it's nice and safe. Right, one desk cleared up. Got rid of all the rubbish. Um, I've got this brush here, which is a, a, a non-static brush. It's actually a bit di dirty now, but I, I use it to brush the bottom of the circuit board that way and then that way, just to make sure that there's nothing which is causing a short. It has caught me out in the past. So uh, that's the modular um, changed just there. Uh, we've got our wires going to circuit board, the signal in, this is coming from the ULA and the 5 volts. Uh, the circuit board that we built is in place and the signal cable going to the uh, jack or the, the phone there, is it called? The round thing just there, that goes to telly. So I've switched on my monitor which is just there. So the next thing we'll do is to plug in the power into there. We've got our signal cable, which is dangling on the floor. Put that in, just there. Right, let's see if I can do this. I'll turn the bench lights out. Turn this so you can see. Fingers crossed, let's see if it works. There it is, we have a K, fantastic. Um, we can't do anything because obviously there's no keyboard plugged in at the moment, but that means that the modular that here, the, the uh, conversion has worked. That's a lovely, lovely clear screen, apart from all the scratches on it, but there's no shadowing on that or anything. 
so that's brilliant. That's fantastic. I'm really, really pleased with that. So there we go. That's part one done. Turn that off. That's part of one of this um, refurb, I suppose, um, of the ZX81 completed. Uh, so a few jobs to do, but I hope you've enjoyed that. That's part one of a three-part revamp of this Z ZX81. Catch you again soon. Oh, if you like what I do, please sub subscribe and I'll see you again soon.